In a previous video, we looked at how a sensitometer is used to expose a step wedge onto a piece of film. Today, we're going to look at its evil twin brother, the densitometer. The densitometer is used to measure the density of the film. Now, this is a tool that's commonly used for sensitive metric tests in order to kind of get a good idea of where your exposure and your development falls. It is, however, just a tool. It is not a magic machine that will suddenly make your photographs better. The only thing that will make your photographs better is looking at and making more photographs. The densitometer is only a tool to show you the densities of your film. What you do with that information is up to you. There are a lot of people who are very good at photography without ever even hearing the word densitometer. So don't think that this is something you must have in your toolbox. That being said, if you do have one and you want to learn how to use it a little bit better, or you're thinking about getting one, then this video is just a primer on how it's used. There are several different models out there. There are some that read transmission of film in black and white only, some that read uh, color negatives, some that read color positives, some that read all three, some that only read reflection of prints. And then there are some that read ultraviolet for film. That's for people who are using alternative processes. Now, I will let you in on a little secret, and that is you can mimic a densitometer using a spot meter. Now, it's not as direct as just pointing a spot meter at the film and you're done. So I'm going to cover how to do that in a completely separate video down the road. But if you have the means to get a spot meter and a light box, then you're most of the way there. So stay tuned for that at some future time. To use a densitometer, first turn it on, make sure it's got power. Uh, this particular model is going to go through a self-test. Once you have that and it's turned on, make sure it is properly calibrated. We'll go over calibrating this particular model another time, but you do want to make sure that it is reading correctly for your high and low values. The last thing you want to do is trick yourself with an uncalibrated machine. Then, depending on the model you have, this, this one will do both transmission and reflection. So I want to show both of those today. So right now it's on transmission mode. I'm going to click color and do, uh, show only visual first. Visual would be on this machine for black and white. So we have a step wedge exposed on this film that we made with the sensitometer and you want to read this emulsion side up uh, or emulsion side towards your sensor. So in mine, the sensor's on the top, light on the bottom. So put this in. Usually what you want to do first is read some blank part of the film. That is your base plus fog. For me, it reads a density of 0 0.26. Then I can read any values other than that. So if I read this patch, I'm at 0 0.43, and that is patch number five. So that would be almost uh, 0 0.2, almost 0 0.2 above base fog. And you can read other patches as needed. Like that patch is 1.77. And that is basically how you would read it. So you would move your negative around and read the different patches of your negative as you would want to check the density. So with this being just a simple step wedge, it's just steps of density. And then you would typically want to mark on whatever form or spreadsheet you're using the amount above base fog. And you're usually looking for most purposes 
uh, the first density that has 0.1 uh, over base plus fog. And that would be your zone one density if you are doing the uh, zone system type of reading. So for me, if my base reading is 0 0.26, then I'm looking for anything that reads 0.36 or close to it, plus or minus 0 0.02. So if I read, if I read patch four, that's 0 0.34, that's uh, 0.08 above. Patch five is 0 0.4, uh, so that is 0.14 above. So um, four would probably be my close uh, closest to zone one patch. So that's a transmission. So let me show you reflection. For that, <clears throat> I have a step wedge that I exposed. I'm going to choose my reflection and we have low value which would be white 0 0.04 and then high value would be black 2.2 and we can read something in between 1.01 .01, Zero point one two, and so on. So I can read both my pure white and my pure black, and compare them to other papers, other developers, other toners, and see if I get any sort of maximum above two point one nine. That seems to be my max. Yeah. So two point one nine would be the max for this paper and developer combination. It's not toned. So if I wanted to see if a selenium toner created a higher maximum black, then I could compare it to the maximum black on here of 2.19. So pretty simple way to measure. Then if I really wanted to recolor, I could choose on mine the color setting. I have red, green, and blue, and I could read those values again. So for pure white, I'm getting, hmm, 0 0.05 for red, 0 0.05 for green, and then 0 0.02 for blue, which means my highlights are slightly yellow. For my blacks, I'm reading 2.17, 2.23 for green, and 2.17 for blue. So it says my highlights, or my shadows, get slightly green. And then you can read anything, any part in between. Bear in mind, this is black and white paper. See, my medium gray is perfectly medium gray. So with this being Ilford Classic paper, you would see my highlights get ever so slightly yellow, while my shadows get ever slightly green. But my midtones are neutral. And those are the basics. In the future, at some point, we're going to cover uh, sensitometry in its basic form, but not quite ready there yet. Now that we've looked at the two tools, we'll start getting into that another time. But if you are out there looking for a densitometer, there are a few things that you need to know. One, as I mentioned before, there are several different types out there. Now, there are different models, different makes. Uh, mine is x right and it's the 810 model. There's an 811 model, which does everything mine does, as well as color positives. Then there are just older models, like the 316 and a bunch of others. Then there are different brands. Tobias, they make good ones. I've used theirs before. Easy to use, easy to calibrate. There is Eseco, uh, there is Macbeth, and there's Highland. Highland is still making them. And that's the second thing I want to come to, and that is price. We are long past the days of being able to pick up one of these things for like 20 bucks on eBay. Unfortunately, the market has swelled back up and all of the old closing labs and medical offices have already offloaded theirs at rock bottom prices. So now we're dealing with the, I wouldn't say second hand, maybe third hand market and prices are going back up. So the model that I have, which I did get like 12 years ago, rock bottom prices, I noticed on eBay are selling in the four to $500 range. 
Now, that's not to say that you have to spend that kind of money on one. Mine does uh, transmission, reflection, black and white color. If you pare that down to just a black and white transmission uh, densitometer for black and white film, you'll save a lot of money. And then if you get other brands, like Tobias is not the most popular, although it's very good, as you might be able to save some money. And then there's like the Kodak Model 1, which is old, but quite frankly, it's still usable. And you can find those on eBay for like 20 or $30. Now I've been tempted to pick one up, and I might still just to do a video about it. So if you are shopping, be aware, some prices way up there, 1400, 1500, I think for the Highland. Could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it's it's in that area. Down to the 500s for the used x rights and then you can go from there. So it's not a cheap tool, so make sure if you're shopping, it is something you really, really want to use. But again, it's not going to make your photographs better. It's only going to tell you if you are reaching your target for exposure and development. That's it. So understand what it is you're looking for and what this machine can do for you and get out there and make some photographs. We'll see you next time and thank you for watching.